everybody, Phil here, and uh, what we got going on today is I, I did a little setup here on my desk because I got a question um, on one of my YouTube videos, and then the same question was asked on my Facebook group um, called I Love All Things Radio. It's a great group. I wish you all would join. So instead of trying to type everything out, explain everything, I decided to go ahead and do a video because I wanted to do a video anyway on hooking up a voltage booster to your circuit and the proper way to do that. And this is also going to involve how to incorporate a relay into that setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera over my shoulder here and shoot down so you guys can see what I got going on. So I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what we've got going on here. Now, the reason I'm showing you this setup, and I've showed you this before in some other videos, is some of you guys, and also myself, sometimes you want to have your, your box dual-powered, which means it'll be running on the battery and the power supply. Now, the, the reason you have to use a relay, because if you don't, what will happen is, if you just wire things straight together, the power supply it's going to try to charge the battery and it's not this power supply is not designed to do that it's not designed for that kind of a current pull it's only designed to run your project at a certain amperage and two things are going to happen maybe three but number one you're probably going to end up burning up your power supply because it's going to get hot and overheat and it's not designed to do that the other thing probably going to happen is you're probably going to end up overcharging your battery and probably ruining your battery because there's nothing to cut off the charging process when it's charged, like if you use a regular battery charger. Now, because of this, of this, you're going to have to have two ports on your box. You're going to have to have one port for your battery charger to plug in and one port for your power supply to plug in. So. That's what I got going on here. Now let me show you just real quickly how to hook up the relay because that was one of the questions we had. Now also if you're going to do this both your power supply and your battery have to be the same voltage. Now if you want to use a 24 volt battery that will work just fine but you're going to have to use a 24 volt power supply as well because the voltages have to be equal. But at the same time, most of your relays are 12 volts, so you really need a 12 volt system. And that's what the voltage booster comes into play. We're going to explain that in just a minute. All right, what we got going on here is this is the, the power supply coming in. And these power supplies are great. I believe they're 5 or 6 amps, which is more than enough to run your project. And they come in this little adapter right here that you can plug in. And what I like to do is use these connectors right here to plug in my power supply to an actual box and you guys have seen me do that before of course we have our battery this is a really nice little battery here this is a 12 amp hour 12 volt battery it's got a lot of juice and we have everything ringing to our relay now when you are hooking up your relay I like to run all my negatives to, to the odd numbers and the positive wires to the even numbers. It just makes it easier when you're wiring it up. So basically, as you can see right here, we have our battery coming in to the normally closed side. And what that means is when the relay is deactivated, the power coming in is going to go right back out. So right now, this, this is our outputs, as you can see, on the relay. And the outputs are terminals 5 and 6. The normally closed input is 1 and 2, which is down here. And so now power is flowing from the battery through the relay. And, of course, we have our distribution block here for our ground, but also we have it going to a fuse. You always want to put a fuse on the back side of your relay. Now, you can put one before the relay as well. It won't hurt anything, but you always want to have your fuse on the back side of the relay, of the output of the relay. Now, the other thing is I also have it on a switch for testing because again this is constantly feeding it power so I want to have some control over that power coming in. Now as you can see over here we have our power supply wires coming in to terminals 3 and 4. Now 3 and 4 are the normally open side and what that means is when the relay is turned off no power can flow through here from the power supply. Now, when the relay is turned on, 
with 12 volts, what happens is the normally closed side opens so the battery gets disconnected from the circuit. And now it allows, it closes the circuit for the power supply. So now only power supply power is coming through the output terminals. And by doing it this way, the battery and the power supply will never touch each other. And they won't get damaged. And also the cool thing is you can also charge your battery at this time if you have access to be able to charge your battery. And also this setup works really good if you have, let's say, a full wheeler and you want to power or you want to put this in your vehicle and you want to power it off your vehicle, you can put the relay in here and it'll do the same thing as the power supply. You run off the vehicle power and it'll bypass the battery power. So now you're using the alternator in the vehicle to run it and you don't have to worry about using your battery if you're in a vehicle that has 12 volts. Now, as you can see here, we have jumper wires going from 3 and 4 to 7 and 8. Now the reason we do that is because 7 and 8 are the power wires for the relay. So what happens is automatically when your power supply comes on, or in this case gets plugged in, it's going to trip the relay or turn the relay on and that's going to disconnect the battery and now it's going to allow the power supply power to come through as long as it's plugged in because it's activated the relay. So that's, that's how that happens. So that's, that's the way you would do that. Now, let's talk about amplifiers and boosters for just a minute. Now, this is a really nice amplifier. Of course, we knew Duke was going to show up. <laughs> I forgot all about Duke. All right, Duke, come here. You're going to have to sit in my lap because I'm going to have to talk about this. So sit right here. Here's a really nice amp from uh, Tiny Sign. It's a uh, 100 watts per channel. Now, you don't have to use this amp. You can use whatever amp you like. And just check out the, uh, the ratings on your amp. Now, right here, you can't read this, but it says this amp runs from 14 volts to 39 volts. And what that means is you're only going to get your maximum power out of this amp, the 100 watts a channel, if you're running at 39 volts. And you're thinking, well, how can I get 39 volts if I've got a 12-volt system? Well, that's what the voltage booster is going to do. And again, this is with any amp. Uh, a lot of your amps out there run at about 24 volts, uh, the smaller ones. Uh, the larger ones tend to run at the higher voltage. Um, I had one the other day that I did in the project you saw with the movie theater box. And that amp actually ran at 48 volts. So we actually... Uh, I've got a heavy duty booster. These boosters come in different sizes. Uh, I like these right here. I believe these go up to 32 volts. And they work really, really well. So you don't have to always go the, the maximum voltage. Watch out, dude. Come busy. So what we're going to do is we, we want to just boost this up. Now, I like to boost them up to about 24 volts. They tend to work really well at 24 volts. So that's what we're going to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your multimeter because you never, never, come on, dude, go over there, go over there. You never want to hook up your voltage booster to your amplifier until you've dialed in the voltage you want because these come preset from the factory. It could be set too high and you could actually burn up your amplifier. I've actually done that. So you got to be really careful when you're doing this. So... We're going to go ahead and um, get Duke out of the way so you can see what's going on. Not right now, Duke. Okay, so we're going to set our voltmeter to the 200 volts because we're going to be trying to get to 24 volts. Sit down. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead... Now, if you see on the booster here, and mostly boosters are the same, you're going to have an input and output. So we're now we're plugging the input side. And have this little adjustment screw right here. Now, you want to turn these very, very slowly. And the reason being, when I first got these, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I just kept turning the screw, turning the screw, turning the screw. And one of these capacitors actually exploded. So I wasn't too happy about that. So we're going to go ahead. Duke, not right now. <coughs> It's driving me crazy. So go over there. Go over there. Go. We're going to turn this on. 
and so the little light came on so we're going to see what voltage we're getting so you're going to take your voltmeter here and we're going to go ahead and check the input side actually the output side pardon me and let me make sure which is positive which is negative so positives on the outside negatives on the inside all right see right now we have 21 volts so what we're going to do is we're going to take our little small screwdrivers here and these are great these, these are harbor freight for less than ten dollars these work fantastic they're called precision screwdrivers and we're going to go ahead and turn this clockwise uh, for you millennials out there to the right and don't turn it real far and we're going to go ahead and check it again see where we're at see now we're at 23.7 so what I'm going to try to do is see if I can hold these on there and turn the screw at the same time no, probably not. So I'm, I'm going to turn this screw just a little bit more, about a half a turn. Let's see where we're at. 24.1, that's about where I'd like to have it. So go ahead and turn off your booster. Now, it's a really good idea to do this on the bench before you install it. It just makes it a whole lot easier because you may have to put your booster at an odd angle. Now, the way I attach my boosters inside is I go ahead and put Velcro on the bottom here and that insulates all these contacts because I use the metallic um, dyno mat and it will short out all this stuff you have right here. So you want to go ahead and insulate that. Or you can mount it on a piece of wood, however you, you want to do it. Alright, we've got to talk to Duke for a minute. What's up Duke? You having a good day? It's Saturday morning, almost 8 o'clock, and I'm trying to get this video done. I was trying to get it done last night, and I just, I really wasn't feeling good. I was feeling kind of under the weather. So, we're doing this video now, and it'll be up this afternoon. Duke, you really can't lay there. I love you, but you're driving me crazy. Let's sit in my lap. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach our booster to our amplifier and again this is just for for show but um, if you were building your project you could go ahead and install everything and hook it up because you got your voltage set come on duke so let me go ahead and put that on the negative side get my screwdriver here Positive side. Tighten that up. Alright, turn the switch on. And a little light came on the amp there, as you see. The Bluetooth is blinking. And we're doing really good. So, just for fun, let's go over here and check our voltage on the amplifier. Now, they sell all different types of voltage boosters. Um, I like these particular ones because a lot of the amps I install run about 24 volts in the smaller projects. Now, if I was going to be using a larger project or I needed more voltage, I would do that. Now, this a little, little something else real quick I'm going to tell you guys. Let's go ahead and check this real quick. And well, it would help I turn the voltage meter on, wouldn't it? And there we go, 24.1 volts. Now here's something else I want to tell you guys real quick on the boosters. Um, so you don't get confused or I might get this question. Now, you have 12 volts on this side. And it just came undone. I didn't ever tighten that one down. Come on now. Alright. Turn this off here. Now, again, you have 12 volts on this side, 
and you have 24 volts on this side. So the booster is just for the amplifier. Now, if you're going to be using some other circuits in your system, like if you're going to have a USB connector port, if you're going to have a radio or anything else that requires 12 volts, you want to come in off the 12 volt side and power your other things. The booster is only for the amplifier, so you never want to hook up your accessories on the back side of the booster. You always want to be on the front side of the booster. So you always want to get hook up all your accessories from the 12 volt side. And you only want to hook up the amplifier on the on the other side. So that way, it'll help you um, get everything. And again, don't forget to put your fuse on the back side of the the relay. You can put it on the front side of the relay. Um, you don't really need one on the power supply side. I would put one maybe on the battery side in case something comes undone or shorts out. But always put a fuse in your project. And you can see you just put little wire connectors, the F connectors, and you can plug a fuse right in. Makes it really convenient. And you can tie the fuse up kind of high somewhere so you have easy access to the fuse. Because the fuses do blow once in a while for odd reasons. Could be a spike in the voltage. And then, of course, you have your fuse on the 12 volt side. I mean, your switch, pardon me. And these little rocker switches are great. I got all kinds of switches that I use. But anyway, now again, if I were to plug this in, the relay would trip. You know what? Let me go ahead and show you what happens when the relay trips. To see right now we're running off the battery. But if I plug in the power supply, you heard that little click and see the little green light is on? See now we're on power supply power. So that all works out really good like that. So anyway, so I show you guys how all this works. And if you have any questions let me know and relay just click back and we'll be back on battery power so everything works really good so thank you guys so much for watching and y'all have a great great day and I will see y'all next time please subscribe to my channel I got a lot of new subscribers I can't thank you guys enough um, for everything and just uh, thanks for watching I got another video coming out later this weekend of a project I'm working on but I want to go ahead and answer this question about this and um, I hope I answered all your questions um, you can leave me a comment below best way to contact me is on my Facebook group called I love all things radio that way I can post pictures and answer your questions a whole lot better so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you later on this weekend